Thank you for joining with me. We are picking up our reading again in the journey through the text of A Course in Miracles by the Foundation for A Course in Miracles. We are by Kenneth Wapnick, Ph.D. We are on Chapter 2, Defenses, and we are picking up in the right-minded use of denial. And Chapter 2 is the Separation and the Atonement. The right-minded use of denial. The purpose of the ego's line of defense is attack and to conceal what it taught we need defense from, sin, guilt, and fear. The atonement is a defense by virtue of telling us there is nothing to be defended against, nothing from which we need protection. To repeat the lovely phrase, we are at home in God, dreaming of exile. As a defense, the atonement awakens us from the dream of guilt, enabling us to recognize that nothing happened. However, the ego tries to get us to deny we are guilty, the meaning of repression. It makes the error of guilt real and then says, it is not in our minds but in others. The Holy Spirit's use of denial, on the other hand, hides nothing. It simply denies the separation that the ego claims is the truth. This is from the text, chapter 2. The atonement is the only defense that cannot be used destructively because it is not a device you made. The atonement principle was in effect long before the atonement began. The principle was love, and the atonement was an act of love. This is a reference to a later statement that tells us that the atonement began with the resurrection, not the crucifixion. The point here is that the atonement principle arose with the separation as its correction, which elsewhere is metaphorically described as God's creation of the Holy Spirit as answer to the ego's nightmare dream of sin. Jesus is awakening from this dream, an act of love, was the specific expression of this principle. Acts were not necessary before the separation because belief in space and time did not exist. It was only after the separation that the atonement and the conditions necessary for its fulfillment were planned. Then a defense so splendid was needed that it could not be misused, although it could be refused. Refusal could not, however, turn it into a weapon of attack, which is the inherent characteristic of other defenses. The atonement thus becomes the only defense that is not a two-edged sword. It can only heal. The ego is a two-edged sword because the defense it proposes seems to save us temporarily, but in actuality, it reinforces the very error it was meant to protect by reminding us that there is indeed a problem that requires a defense. In chapter 17, we shall read, It is essential to realize that all defenses do what they would defend. Jesus contrasts two kinds of denial or defenses. The ego makes separation, sin, and guilt real and then tries to protect us from them. Yet the protection, which culminates with making the world and body, only serves to reinforce our underlying belief in, in separation. This is the two-edged sword. The defense of atonement, on the other hand, denies the denial of truth. The ego represents truth's denial, the truth being that we are one with God and nothing has changed. That happy fact, excuse my voice. The denial of truth is that we are separate. The atonement, by its gentle and loving presence, as the mind's memory of God's love. A formulation to which we will return is the denial of the denial of truth. That presence of love in our sleeping mind is telling us we never destroyed it, 
we never separated from love because it is within us. This, then, is the proper use of denial, to deny the power of the ego to change reality or to take away from us the peace of God, the principle of the atonement. And I am going to stop there today and we will pick up this reading tomorrow. I thank you so much for joining with me. Have a beautiful day and I will see you then. I love you. Thank you.